Hi, Rob McKillop here. Um, most uh, 19th century guitar books are virtuoso, have virtuoso pieces, and uh, most of the videos you'll find online by professionals are virtuoso pieces. And I'm more interested in today in how people learned the guitar, because I'm a teacher, and uh, it's fascinating to look at uh, books that were written for amateurs to learn to play method books and the one I'm going to look at today has some connection with this guitar in that the authors uh, brothers um, they played this guitar and concerts and around the provinces when I say this guitar I mean one like it it's called a mellophonic guitar and I'm going to make a video another time uh, look in more detail at uh, the instrument. Today it's all about this book. I can't pronounce the brother's name. There it is. Uh, Chebra, Thiebra, Siebra, Zebra, <laughs> Zebra. <laughs> I don't know. You can make your mind up. If you know for certain, let me know. Um, so this is uh, Siebra's handbook for the guitar, round about 1760, maybe a little earlier, um, and maybe 15 years or so after, 10, 15 years after this guitar was made. And it was popular for one particular reason, it was about the cheapest one available, price one shilling. Um, and. Uh, it starts with introductory remarks, but I'm going to be playing pieces from the book. They're probably not pieces you've heard played uh, on the guitar before, which is interesting. Um, you wouldn't hear them in concerts, but they're still beautiful little pieces, arrangements. Um, let me see. Yeah, the introductory remarks have a lot of guff about troubadours and minstrels and... Um, Let's see, Moonlight Serenade Beneath the Balcony, all the things that guitarists got up to. Um, and then at the end of the introduction, um, he says, uh, he's talking about the finances and not everyone's got money. He says, but you can procure a guitar for even less than a guinea. This kept nicely clean and slung around the neck by a ribbon, open brackets, plain for gentlemen, and fanciful as fairy work for the lady, <laughs> close brackets, will suffice, suffice for beginners, whatever may be their position. Position was important in life. What's your position? Okay, well, now they immediately go into, as many uh, method books do, a brick wall of rudiments of music and uh, terrifying um, illustrations of demi semi quavers and so on. Um, usually people just uh, scroll through that or turn the pages. <laughs> uh, he talks about holding the guitar and tuning and then you're immediately into scales and uh, what he calls gamut, gamut in G, gamut in D and so on. Um, and then uh, some minor ones and then chords the chords are very interesting to me because Fernando Sor said um, a guitarist who is a harmonist um, has advantage over those who are not uh, something like that um, now what they give you in a lot of these books is very useful information it's the principal chords that would go into a song or a tune uh, that is chord 1, 4 and 5 in the key um, and the 5 chord would be a 5, 7, a G7 so in the key of C yeah, we'd have C, F, G7 so here we have C, F, G7, C but I missed out one chord, it's a very important chord in the classical era that's between the F and the G7 you get this chord, a C chord, with a G, the third string, in the bass. That's known as a 6-4 chord. Uh, why? Because the top two notes are a sixth and a fourth above the G. G, A, B, C, D, E. 
So it's a C major chord, second inversion, uh, called a 6-4 chord, and that would uh, delay the dominant seventh a little bit. So you get C major, F, G, uh, C with a G in the bass, the 6-4 chord. could use that to do a little uh, prelude, improvised prelude to the song you're about to play in the key of C. And it gives it another keys and it always has this 6-4 chord in there between chords 4 and 5. So play around with that. Um, it's great fun. Um, now it gives a number of arpeggios and then thirds and sixths, which is good because, you know, Fernando Sor said master of the guitar laying, mastering thirds and sixths, something we don't do enough. And then you're immediately into Donizetti uh, opera, a song, O Summer Night, a serenade from Don Pasquale. And it's difficult, the timing's difficult, he's in different positions on the guitar. There's no easy way in um, to, to learn the instrument. Um, I'm going to play a, a piece by Weber. Uh, this is a waltz in Der Freischutz. I actually learned this initially from a, a banjo tutor, in the 19th century banjo tutor. <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, well, to me it is. <laughs> Distance across the, f the nut here is a very narrow 46, where I'm used to 52 millimeters. So <laughs> I'm getting used to it. Um, what else? Ah, Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn on the guitar. It's rarely done. Um, but uh, here's a gondola song. And it's in 6 8. It's got uh, two flats in the key signature. By the way, I should have mentioned you can download this for free. From just just search for the title, and you can get it from IMSLP website. Uh, if you want to play along with me, <laughs> uh, so this is a gondola song by Mendelssohn. Yeah, two flats and some accidentals. So again, not for beginners, but here we go. sentimental songs you'll find in this book as well. Um, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's 
suddenly saw I was in the key of it. I'll start again. <laughs> just read through this twice. Um, okay, what else we got? Uh, Schubert. Yeah, Schubert. Um, he played guitar, Schubert, and uh, some of his songs were published with guitar accompaniments before the piano accompaniments came out. So he was a guitar player. Um, Weary Flowers, a Celebrated Serenade. This is in the key of F. great to play single note melodies. Uh, it helps you with phrasing. Uh, you have to breathe. Imagine your singer breathing uh, these things. Um, and when you accompany singers, it's good to know how to phrase single note melodies. Uh, we've got some Verdi. Uh, Beethoven. <laughs> Beethoven. Um, okay, I'll, I'll do Beethoven. This is a waltz. It's quite long, so I'll miss out repeats. Uh, um, okay, one, two. symphony but um, Donizetti and Bellini lots of operatic stuff uh, Mozart serenade huh, it's nice this one Thank mm -hmm. you. 
sets of thirds culminating in a first inversion sixth. Um, you should always be aware of your intervals. Uh, now finally, uh, there is a, a final song, God Save the Queen, but uh, I'm not the person to play that. So I'm going to play something much more interesting and beautiful. Uh, this is to th The Last Rose of Summer, one of Thomas Moore's um, melodies of songs. Thomas Moore wrote the poems, set them to old songs, Irish tunes and so on. And um, phenomenally popular with piano arrangements, but he himself played the guitar. And he used to perform them sometimes with the guitar. Um, and now, yes, yeah, it's, it's a deeply sad song about the last rose uh, on the branch and dying. And uh, of course, the poet identifies with that. Um, so here we go, a bit of sentimentality to finish with. <laughs> Siebra's Handbook of the Guitar and a few beautiful tunes for people to play in this mid-19th century. I um, hope you liked it.